How are you today? Welcome! Art Jeremiah here, and in today's video, we're going to be building this awesome little skull cave. And stay tuned until the end of the video to find out what dwells inside. I started out by carving a rough shape with a retractable knife and heat tool. As I got into more detail, I switched to my hobby knife and a file. I then cut a base from a vinyl tile. I really like using this material when I need a base that's stronger than foam core. It's quick and easy to work with as well as affordable. I then peel off the paper on the base and slightly bevel the edges to give it a more organic look. Then glue the base to the skull with some hot glue. Oh wait, I almost forgot. I wanted to paint the inside of the skull first, so I hurried and unattached that before the glue dried and painted inside the skull. Then I stick it to the base. These are skeleton hands I found in the Halloween section at Walmart. I basically ripped the fingers off at the third knuckle, then attached them to the base with a thick layer of hot glue. I sculpted some lower teeth out of individual pieces of foam in the same manner as earlier, chiseling out the rough shapes, then gradually adding more detail. I used the same process when adding spikes to the skull's forehead. Next, I mixed some thick sculpt mold and added it to the base to give it a sort of stony, uneven appearance. This is the bag of sculpt mold that's sold on Amazon. I'll have that linked in the description below if you want to pick some up online. I then take some filler and a brush and smooth out the crevices and mistakes I was unhappy with. I occasionally get my brush wet. This helps smooth things out a bit more. After painting the piece with several layers of black paint and Mod Podge, I start the paint job off with a liberal coat of darker gray and gradually work up to lighter grays using an overbrush technique. Then I brush some khaki paint on all the bones and the places I wanted to add a little warmth to the build. That way it's not a dull, cold gray. Then I add a light dry brush of cream. I do this sparingly and only in places where I wanted it to look like the light was catching it. Next, I pull out my airbrush with some black paint and add more details to the areas I wanted to shadow. This stage seriously brought out a lot of detail. My airbrush is probably my favorite hobby tool for getting the paint effects I'm looking for. And now for the glamour shots. Thanks to the patrons who helped make this video happen. Without you, this channel would be no more. I sincerely appreciate you guys. So what lives inside? Well, this is a tarantula's new home. Someone reached out to me through Etsy to build a creepy cave for their tarantula cage, and this is what I came up with. This would also be a great cave entrance for a game like Dungeons & Dragons. If you or anyone else you know would be interested in a piece like this, then feel free to reach out to me on Etsy or my website, and there's links to those in the description below. Now if you want to see another one of my builds, then click on the video that I've handpicked for you on the screen right now.